Now remember, we're talking about the faithfulness of, of man in Psalms 112, and we're discussing the upright, righteous man. In verses 9 and 10, the last two verses of this chapter, it says, He, the upright man, has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn, his life, will be exalted with honor. And the wicked will see it and be grieved. And the wicked will gnash his teeth and melt away. In the desire of the wicked shall perish. <laughs> what powerful, powerful characters displayed in these last two verses. Here the translation suggests that the giving of the upright man is not occasional, it's not impulsive, but it's constant and even systematic giving. In other words, he has dispersed, that's he's given abroad, and that could be missionary giving, although in the context of Psalms 112, probably not, but he's taken his goods and distributed, and he's given to the poor. Unfortunately, what, what has happened in America to a lot of believers is when riches have increased, they set their heart on them. And now they got sidetracked to pursuing wealth. And then they come up with an idea, well, if I get this money, I'm gonna give so much to God. Hmm. See what the upright man does, the upright woman does, the upright teenager does, they maintain a generosity birth in their spirit by the indwelling Holy Spirit. Stinginess has no place in the follower of Christ. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about tithing to a local church. I'm talking about everything about your giving in life. Everything. The Father God is the example of generosity. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. When a disciple of Christ finds a need that God has given him the means to provide for, he just or she just releases the resources to meet the need. I know that brings us to a high trust level, but that's where upright people rise to. The measurement of our generosity is demonstrated by the hand of God. We don't measure by what others do. We measure by how God has dealt to us. And the result of this, wow, here's another blessing. Not only are we blessed in our giving because of it, because there's such joy in being able to assist others in their need. And we have to be discreet about that. But we also are given a place of honor. And that honor is announced with a trumpet sound. Wow. And I know people that are genuinely humble about it. They don't really want the trumpet blast, but it says right in the word, his horn will be exalted with honor. So it's a mighty important thing that we always guard our heart and subsequently guard our actions that the generosity that we are doing is not because, wow, it's a cultural thing to do. No, we're doing it because we are so touched by the love of God and God has so blessed us at this point in our life that we must be a blessing. We must be a channel through which God's love and mercy can flow to others. You see, character is a powerful, powerful thing. And it takes a lifetime of consistent choices that match up with righteousness to build the character described in verse nine. <laughs> Having a prayer partner to assist us in keeping true to our call can be extremely important about this as much as guarding one's heart. So I'm saying to us, if we're upright, we're gonna be a generous people. Now notice the last verse. And it, this depicts the, the character of the wicked. They see the righteousness and honor bestowed upon the upright and they're grieved and angered. Huh. Wicked people hate to see righteous people prosper. We're well aware that the wicked people will go to any length to undo the honor of the righteous from lying about them by manufacturing accusations. I mean, the Jezebel type spirit to conniving some means to remove them from a position of honor and any means come into play to undo the righteous. There are no scruples, they have no rules, they have no morals, and they have no guidelines. When it comes to persecuting the righteous, wicked people want to do it every day, all day long, in any way they can. But notice the solemn conclusion where he promotes the upright and righteous person because all these characteristics begin to fill their life. 
Alas, the desire of the wicked shall perish and come to nothing. Where they wanted to see the righteous done away with, they're the ones that come to nothing. Pay close, pay close attention to what the word of God teaches. The wicked may appear to even be in charge. Boy, sometimes we see that, don't we? Boy, the evil men have risen in authority. And that's in America for sure. And they may proudly boast of the success of their evil desires. Oh my, look at what the unchanging word of God states. They will gnash with their teeth and melt away. In other words, they will be so distraught, they will grind their teeth. They will evaporate. All they had hoped for will come to not praise God. Now, never, never become overly concerned about those who are evil and want to undo your life. <laughs> God has a way of bringing them down without your help. Just continue to live uprightly. You're responsible to do that. And continue while you're living uprightly to be generous and kind and continue to pursue your obedience to the God you love and then watch God open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings beyond temporary wealth, make you sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, fill you up with the peace of God, saturate your soul with hope and give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ah, oh, come on. You want to be blessed? <laughs> then become upright and be generous and be kind. Oh, Father, I know you're already working in me. You're working in everyone who watches this video who loves you and obeys you to produce fruit that brings glory to God. And we're to be shining as stars. Help us do it in an in a evil and perverse generation. Help us to be faithful to what you've called us to do and be for the glory of God, we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful day. And just keep following Jesus and live uprightly, no matter who treats you poorly or wrongly. Be blessed.